Hi, and welcome to 12SDD, Option 2, Lesson 14, Data Streams. Here are the dot points, pause if you'd like to read them. Apologies for the smallness of the print here. There's quite a few dot points that are covered uh, fairly simply. So what's a data stream? Um, this lesson will examine a data stream between two hardware devices. Um, a data stream is basically a, single, a signal sent between two devices to send commands, data, um, or a number of other reasons. Uh, basically, any time you want to send a message from one thing to another, it's a data stream. So, it's important to note that there's no specific way for data streams to be constructed. Each device is different and has its own format. This lesson will deal with devices in a general sense, as each data stream has common parts, although the specifics of each could be different. In an exam situation, you'll be asked to either talk about the generalities of a data stream, um, and a big clue here would be if they give you no real information to work with, or you'll be given the key to the data stream and be asked to interpret the data stream or to write a data stream to convey some command or piece of data. Data stream is generally made up of three parts. You've got a header, which is the data at the beginning of the stream, and this could contain a whole lot of information, uh, such as um, the device that's sending the data, the date and time it was sent, uh, error checking, and the amount of data to be sent. Um, the next thing we have is data block, which is the actual data that we are sending. Um, and this could also include uh, a variety of control characters. We also have a trailer, and the trailer is the end of the data stream, and this could include error checking characters as well, um, and also characters to mark the end of the stream. So control, uh, uh, control characters are characters that are sent during the data stream to control the device. Uh, they aren't part of the data. For example, when I send data to a printer, the letters, numbers, and punctuation, they're my data. That's what I want to print. Um, every time I need to move down a line, the printer needs to move the paper or the print head to, to make that happen. And this movement is completed because of a control character called a carriage return. So there's an invisible character. We send the, the character through the data stream. Uh, the printer will take that character out of the data stream, interpret it as move the print head so I start a new line, and it starts a new line. It's really important that the device actually strips those characters from the data. Otherwise, uh, the data won't make sense or you'll print the wrong thing or, or something like that. Uh, and the hardware manufacturer will uh, specify guidelines on how a data stream is to be formatted. Um, devices can't think for themselves, so they can't figure it out if something goes wrong. So it's important that these guidelines are followed. Um, they are set down in hardware specifications. If the format of the data stream is incorrect, the device will either perform a function incorrectly, send the wrong data, or do nothing at all. So, we're going to learn how to interpret some data streams. Okay? Uh, in this scenario, we're going to be sending a data stream from a control unit to a set of four speakers. The data stream is broken up in the following way. The first bit will be the start bit, and that will be a zero. And that signifies we're starting to send some data. Bits two and three will be identifiers for speakers. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Obviously speakers 1, 2, 3, and 4. Um, volume setting is uh, four bits 4 and 5, and we'll have 0, 0 for mute, 0, 1 for low, 1, 0 for medium, and 1, 1 for high. 6 to 7 are the end bits of 0, 0, to signify that we're ending the data. Um, and the last bit is the even parity bit. So parity is a way to check if the data stream is correct, and what it does in terms of even parity, it tries to, um, or it doesn't try, it makes the number of ones even. So if a data stream has five ones in it, then the even parity bit will be one to make it six, which is an even number. If there was two ones, the even parity will be zero to keep it two so that it is even. Okay, so we're going to use this data here, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. So 1's the start bit, oh, sorry, 0 is the start bit, the first one, and that's a data stream. The next two zeros are the identifiers, and they're going to be 0, 0, the first speaker. The next bits are 1, 0, the volume setting, 1, 0 is medium, so we're going to set the speaker to medium. The next two bits are 0, 0, they're the end bits, 0, 0, so this is always 0, 0, and the last bit last bit here is the even parity bit. So if you look up here, before this bit, we've only got one one, so we need to use a one to make the total number of ones in this data stream two, which is an even number. 
and it's important to note the different parts of the data stream here as well. The first three zeros, the start bit and the identifier, they're header. They're not actually part of the data stream itself. The only thing we're sending in this data stream is the volume setting, and that is the data stream that we're sending. The last bits are the end bits and the parity bit, and they are the trailer. So you'll be expected to be able to not just interpret those, but also to write algorithms so that a computer can either interpret the data stream or send out data streams of its own. Um, in this case, you could use arrays to store uh, a variety of different bits of data before you send them to the data stream or to interpret it after you um, got the data stream. You might also save the data stream to a string variable and either treat the string as an array, which you can do, because a string is an array of characters, or you can use string manipulation functions such as concatenate, which joins strings together, uh, left, which pulls a certain amount of characters from the left side of the string, right, which pulls a certain amount of characters from the right side of the string, mid, which will pick a character at some point in the string and then pull a certain number of characters from that point, and len, which will give you the length of the string. This sounds pretty hard, and I understand that. So the only way to understand this topic completely is to do heaps and heaps of questions. The more questions you do, the better. So I really recommend starting at the earliest HC, so probably 2000, 2001, something like that, okay? And complete the option questions, particularly about data streams, to give you a good idea of what you need to do come exam time. For this topic, or for all topics, but particularly this topic, the more questions you can do, the better.